So way back when in the playlist, uh, when I introduced to you the equation, the Cartesian equation for a plane, and we looked at um, situations where uh, two or three planes were intersecting. Uh, whether they intersected at a point, whether they intersected on a line, uh, whether it was a sheaf or triangular prism, okay? And the equation of the plane that we were looking at, the Cartesian equation, might look something like this. So 2x plus 3y plus 4z plus 5 equals 0, for example, okay? Now, I briefly mentioned that the coefficients of x, y, z here form the or a normal vector to the plane. So we refer to that as n, the normal vector to the plane, 2, 3, 4, okay, um, where this is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so the coefficients of x, y, z form a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. And this is really what I want to reintroduce here. How can we get um, to this equation of the plane? Why, why does that make sense? Where does that originally come from? Okay, so what I want you to think about is a plane. Okay, so here is a plane. And let's say we put in some axes down here just so that we know we're working with three dimensions. And here is the origin O. And uh, what you'll remember when we looked at the vector equation of the plane was we needed, first of all, to find a way to get onto the plane. So we needed a point that was on the plane first. So let's say that point is here, and that is the point capital A. Okay? So... If I know the coordinates of A, then I know the position vector of A. So the position vector of A will tell me how to get from the origin to that point. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that is the vector A, lowercase a. In fact, I'm also going to say lowercase a is the vector A1, A2, a3, okay? And that's the vector A1, A2, A3. Now, um, as I said, the normal vector to the plane is at right angles to it. Now, the normal vector I can place anywhere on the plane, okay? That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to place it at A, and this is a normal vector to the plane, n, and I'm going to say that that is n1, n2, n3. And to identify that it's at right angles to the plane, I'll make it look like that, okay? So, from the point A, I now want to get to any other point that is on the plane. So, let's say that that is the point R. So here's a point that I want to get to. And, I, and this is just referring to a general point that is on the plane. OK? So what I can do is I can say, OK, well, if there's a general point on the plane, it can have a position vector. OK? And I'm going to say that that is the vector lowercase r. Now, because it's a general point on the plane, Okay, it's going to have coordinates x, y, z. So the position vector of R will be x, y, z, like that. Now, if I want to get from A to R, okay, so this is the vector A, R, then to get from A to R, what I need to do is I need to go from A to O, and then from O to R. So A to O plus O to R. Now A to O is going back along lowercase a, so that's minus a, and then plus R. So this is minus a plus R, which is R minus a. So this vector I can write as R minus a. Now, 
Something that's going to be cropping up in the next section when we, we continue with the Scalar product, one of its features is that um, if you've got two vectors where the Scalar product is zero, then they are perpendicular to one another and vice versa. So that's a different only if statement. Okay. So what I'm saying there is that R minus A is perpendicular to N because R minus A is just a vector that's on the plane. And the normal vector is normal to any point, any part of the plane. And so n has to be perpendicular to r minus a. So I can say that r minus a, um, which way around do I want to do? I, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll do it the other way around. I'll write it that way around. So n dotted with r minus a has got to be equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to come up against this in the next section. So don't worry if you haven't seen that yet. Then what you can do is you can see, or you can show rather, that this is distributive. So you are able to expand this bracket out. Now, uh, to convince you that that is the case, I'm going to go through that now. So n is the vector n1, n2, n3, as I defined there. And we're dotting that with r minus a. Now, r is here, and that's a. So we've got x take away a1, y take away a2, z take away a3. OK, so when I dot those together, I get n1 times x take away a1, so n1 times x take away n1 times a1. Then I've got plus n2 times y minus a2, so I'm going to expand that out. a2. And then I've got n3 times z take away a3. So what I'll do is I'll regroup these so that I've got these together, n1x plus n2y plus n3z, and I'm going to group these together, so take away n1a1 uh, plus n2a2 plus n3a3. Because that is the scalar product of n1, n2, n3 and x, y, z. So this is n1, n2, n3 dotted with x, y, z. And this is n1, n2, n3 dotted with a1, a2, a3. So actually, this is the same as n dotted with r take away n dotted with a. So we are able to distribute that out, that scalar product, as that is showing. OK, so we can do that, and there's no problem with that. So I'll get rid of that now, give myself a little bit more space. OK, now, kind of... Uh, uh, that's kind of like foreshadowed what I'm going to do next, because the n dotted with r, as we've seen, is n1 dotted with x plus n2 with y, or sorry, n1 times x plus n2 times y plus n3 times z. And then we've got take away n dotted with a. Now, n is just n1, n2, n3. a is a1, a2, a3. So there's no variables in there. So it is just going to be some scalar quantity, some value. So I'm going to put that as just plus d equals 0, where d is equal to minus n dotted with a. And this is the general equation, uh, Cartesian equation, for a plane. And you can see how it relates directly to that example I brought up at the beginning, where n1, n2, n3 is 2, 3, 4. And the plus 5 that I've got in the end is the negative dot product of the normal vector times some position vector on the plane. OK, so that is another way of defining the equation of the plane alongside the vector equation.